Port of Allen. A lot of people seem to think, uh, could we have the first slide, please? A lot of people seem to think that the Port of Allen district goes from the Y uh, and Highway 3 and 302 down to Short Creek. Nothing could be further from the truth. Port district boundaries run north from the Kitsap County, Mason County line, where we also uh, have a joint boundary with Port of Bremerton, south to about a mile north of Grapeview, east to the Pierce County line, and west about eight miles down both sides of Hood Canal, where it meets the boundaries of the Port of Shelton on the south and the Port of Duato on the north. County is, or the port is managed by three commissioners, Judy Scott, who is the commissioner for District 1. Judy's been a commissioner since 2000. She is a commercial real estate uh, broker and property manager. Ted Jackson, Commissioner 2, is our current chair for District 2. He's also the uh, current director of the Mason County United Way. He served as a fish and wildlife person here, for, retired from there, and was later the police chief in the city of DuPont. And Scott Cooper is the second in command at the North Mason Fire District and has uh, been a commissioner since 2016. Next slide, please. There we go. Uh, this is just a little run through about the Port of Allen facilities. Next slide, please. Uh, we have our main office and uh, at the Allen Waterfront Park. Uh, you can see the, the view from the, from the park here as well as our building. Next slide, please. Uh, the iconic Allen Dock, 200 feet of, out into the waterfront, has been here since 1923. The first slide here is uh, a shot from 1949, and the next two are very recent ones. Next slide, please. Uh, the Allen Waterfront Park and Gazebo. The Waterfront Park is Mason County's most widely used community facility. Uh, it is the host to all kinds of things. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, Gazebo and Park are real popular wedding venues. Uh, it's booked most weekends from about mid-May through Labor Day, a lot of times both weekend days. Uh, there's a meeting room where the commissioners meet, but it can also accommodate large gatherings uh, and events. A lot of times it's used as receptions for the wedding. As a buffet counter, sink, microwave, refrigerator, and restrooms are often used for a bridal dressing room. And it's used for a wide variety of community groups as well. Next slide. <clears throat> The gazebo is home to a lot of community events, <clears throat> excuse me, such as the annual Memorial Day celebration where we honor veterans from all across the country and all kinds of places. Uh, it has a wide variety of other uses, including uh, we host the Allen Days Festival. There's car shows, reunions, family outings, plus we have our resident tightrope walker, as you can see, who practices here during the summer. Next slide. Uh, the dock at Allen, this is our newest facility uh, called officially the Allen Transient Mortgage Facility. Uh, it was a dock, it was uh, a wooden dock that blew down in 2019 and we rebuilt it and converted it into a full service marina with 30 amp and 50 amp uh, connections for electricity, water, full pump out facilities, and we can accommodate vessels up to 50 feet in length. Next slide. Uh, as you can see, it was completed in late 2019. Uh, it was a $376,000 $376, upgrade. Um, and Dan Griffey was very, very active in helping us get the money to fund this project. And you can see the ribbon cutting here. Next slide, please. Uh, the Allen Kayak Park debuts or doubles as a second uh, wedding venue, low, much lower cost wedding venue, as well as launching kayaks. Uh, next slide, please. 
uh, Port of Allen Water or North Shore Pitt Canal Marine and Boat Launch. Uh, we can accommodate 12 vessels up there, up to about 45 feet. Uh, it was a location of a lot of parties this summer, as you can see, or you might have went to. Uh, and we have the boat launch. The Port of Allen Water Company, it's a community water system, and it, it is the designated provider for the Allen UGA. Uh, currently licensed for 132 connections. We've got a 245-foot well, a 144,000-gallon storage tank, and uh, a new well coming online by March of 2023. The port's water system is designated to serve 1,000 connections at full UGA build-out. Next slide. Current projects. We have a few things going on. So, um, the Sargent Oyster House Restoration Project. If you've driven by the port, you've seen the Oyster House building setting out there for years. Uh, it actually predates me, and I've been here going on six years. Uh, it was originally moved to location at the head of Gates Inlet. It's the last uh, standing Oyster House Oyster Processing Facility building. So uh, we're working on that. We have $160,000 uh, historic grant to do the stabilization of the building itself, and we got a $218,000 grant from the capital budget to build a new waterfront platform, uh, and it'll sit out on the water in the Allen Waterfront Park when it's ready. Next slide. Uh, we're just built or in the process of just finishing a two lane staging area for the boat ramp in Allen. Uh, as you can see by the one slide where it says subject property, in December we acquired the last parcel in this whole block here that the port didn't own. It was torn down last week and uh, we re rocked everything and we're going to have the staging area complete probably in the next three weeks. Uh, put a median in there with lighting. PUD is supposed to be putting the lighting in today. Um, and we've just got to get some signage and bring some more rock in and it'll be good to go. Next slide. Sweetwater Park. This is a project we're working on with the Salmon Center. Uh, it'll be a completely ADA accessible environmental showcase. The port's developing this on Highway 3 in Belfair, right across from the Cellar Trail. Next slide. Future projects, where are we going from here? Next slide. We're gonna do an indoor shooting range uh, in a county with a little over 60,000 residents, almost 20% of them have concealed carry permits and doesn't count the ones that don't and own guns anyway. This will be a state-of-the-art facility. It's supported by local law enforcement who will use it for training and qualification purposes. It will also keep uh, local, gun local gun owners out of the forest and other outdoor locations because currently there is no place to shoot in Mason County. Uh, we'll also offer uh, firearm safety to the community. Next slide. High Tech Business Park. We will offer local firms a high-tech state-of-the-art venue, which doesn't currently exist in the north end of Mason County. The anti-business climate and high taxes in King County are driving local businesses and local tech companies out. Uh, the EDC in Kitsap County has a ongoing and active recruitment program to bring those companies to Kitsap. What that's done is it's driving the ramps up and driving companies out of Kitsap. So a lot of them are looking towards North Mason County as a place to uh, relocate. And Mason County is a lot more business friendly than Kitsap County is. So uh, we have high hopes for this. Next slide. Regional Destination Multi-Sports Complex. This is, we think, will be the crown jewel of North Mason County when it's done. It's based on the successful Luke Jensen Sports Complex in Vancouver. And we've done quite a bit of research on this and every tournament day brings in about $75,000 to your community. Now we are basically a recreational port. We're not an industrial port like the Port of Shelton. And 
you know, and you can see that from our facility. Uh, we think this will be our form of economic development, which is every port's mission. Next slide. Got a couple additional potential projects. One would be a co-working facility. This is where uh, solopreneurs will come in. They will share conference room, computer. You know, it'll have high-speed broadband. They'll, they'll have uh, locations for computers and everything. Um, shared conference room, co copier, kitchen, that sort of thing, meeting room. This is one of the fastest growing business opportunities uh, in this era. And there's nothing like it in North Mason County. We were originally trying to acquire the Department of uh, Transportation building on Highway 3 that was used as the headquarters for the widening, but we couldn't come to an agreement with the Department of Transportation to acquire that. But we had originally wanted to do that with that building. Uh, we may include it in the industrial harness bill, though. And upgrades of the Lynch Cove swimming pool. When we did our comprehensive plan last year and the year before last, there was a lot of public input about we'd like to have a swimming pool in North Mason. Um, for us to build one really doesn't work. It just doesn't pencil. But uh, there is one at Lynch Cove and it needs some work. Uh, we're looking at doing some RCO grants to be able to do that. And part of the RCO grant process is it will have to be open to the public. So uh, we're still looking into that. But as you can see, there's a lot more going on at the Port of Allen than most people think, and the port's a lot bigger than most people think. So next slide. There you go. Questions? We do have several questions that came in during the presentation, Larry, so I'll go ahead and begin through those. Um, the first is asking if sea level rise is affecting any of your operations or projects. You broke up there. I didn't understand you. I'm sorry. That's all right. Is sea level rise affecting any of your operations or projects? Yeah, we're uh, not doing a lot of business at the gazebo, a lot of wedding business right now because people can't meet. <laughs> But uh, so the answer to that is yes. Uh, okay. We've done quite a bit of bell tightening here to uh, overcome the, the loss of revenue for that. But we're holding our own. Okay. The next question we have is where are you looking to set up the business park? We're still at a location, but somewhere on Highway 3 between Belfair and the Kitsap County line, we think would be ideal. And how does a co-working facility differ from a business incubator? Uh, business incubator, eventually you move out of, uh, and, and a business incubator is meant to where you can grow your company. Uh, a co-working facility is just for individuals that need a place to, to work. They don't have an office at home or they can't get to their office at home or whatever. It's a membership kind of thing, you pay a monthly fee and you come and use all the facility. It's much cheaper than renting an office and if you're just a one person business, it's it's ideal. Great. You know, especially then, if you don't have a business where people have to come to you. But if they do, you can still meet with them there. And how will the sports complex connect or partner with upgraded facilities at North Mason High School? We have been, had some discussions with North Mason High School uh, right now, they don't know for sure what's going to happen with their facilities with the freight mobility corridor. So some of that's kind of up in the air. Um, we are talking potentially with someone to donate some land right now for the facility, and it would be in a different location. And the last question that we have is, are you waiting for businesses to sign up? for Biz Park, or will you begin construction without tenants identified? Uh, once we identify a site and acquire it, we want to get going as quick as we can. Great. Thank you so much, Larry, for your time today. And again, if we have any further questions that come through, we'll be sure to share those with you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to be here.